Hey guys, it's Dr. Childs. Today we're going to be discussing a um, pretty awesome supplement known as Myo Inositol, and we're going to be talking about how to use this nutrient to help with weight loss, um, but then also we're going to talk about how it helps PCOS and infertility um, and just overall balances your sex hormones. Um, before I jump into that, I wanted to say one thing here. Um, I wanted I want to ask you guys a favor. If you could please um, and you if you enjoy what what I've been doing here discussing these uh, various topics um, it would be really helpful to me if you guys could um, either leave a review on iTunes on this podcast just let me know um, what you think I'm doing well what you think I could be better at whatever I just want to hear your your um, uh, your critiques um, and then also if you could subscribe to this YouTube channel this will just help me to know that I'm either doing something good or not, and please let me know. Like I, I, I want to help you guys, so let me know if there's something that you think I should discuss or whatever, and I'll um, put that on uh, my list of things to do. So let's jump into this supplement, though, myonositol, and talk about it. So first of all, what is it, um, and why do we, why, why should we even care? Um, myonositol is actually a sugar alcohol. Um, it is the most um, most common form of its sort of parent supplement known as inositol, and you probably are aware of that supplement. Um, but really, why we why we care about it is that it's because of what it does inside the cell. And so I, I've I put an illustration up here from a study to show how well how we. We, we know that it does some of these things, but it's probably doing other things, but we'll talk about what we think we know. So basically what, what is happening is you can think of it as a, a second messenger that sort of is helping the what helping other hormones do their job better. And so it kind of would be like taking the burden off of off of um, that hormone for doing its functions in the cell. So you could think about it maybe as like um, um, a car that helps you get around. Like instead of using your feet, you can jump in a car and go a lot faster. So myo-inositol can be um, thought of doing or working in a similar way. And this is really interesting because it helps specific hormones in the body. And as you probably know, if you've seen any of my other videos, uh, insulin, and then we're also going to be talking about leptin, which is another really big one. These are the hormones that are the fat regulators in your body, meaning these hormones tell your body to store weight. They also control your appetite. They control your metabolism, etc. So if you could have a supplement that would come or nutrient that would come in and ease the burden of this, this uh, hormone and its function in the cell, you can reverse some of the processes which lead to weight gain. And that's where things get really interesting. So um, the, the benefits of, of myo-inositol, and again, remember, myo-inositol is, is a, uh, like an isoform of its parent, uh, su parent uh, nutrient, inositol. So if you take an inositol supplement, you're getting myo-inositol in it. Now, the actual concentration will vary based off of the supplement and, and a number of other factors, but um, we'll, I'll talk about which supplements you probably want to use and, um, as we get through here. But let's talk about the, and these are all, by the way, the, these benefits I'm going to be discussing are benefits that have been shown in clinical studies. So when I talk about supplements on, on my blog, I try to speak only about the supplements that are um, fairly well studied. Now, supplements in general are never going to be studied um, in as much depth as pharmaceutical medications. I think, you know, we, we all kind of accept that, well, with, with few exceptions. But when it, so when supplements are studied and, and they show a tremendous amount of benefit, um, I like to discuss those because that means that um, there's a high potential for them to work. Now, I think many of you have probably been fooled by supplements that say, you know, weight loss supplements, right? But they may contain a, a smattering of random supplements and nutrients that people claim help with with weight or claim help with with anything else, but they really actually don't. So when we have studies that confirm um, or show potential benefit, that it's really exciting, and so that's why we're talking about this one because this you can see this huge list of benefits, and I've linked to relevant studies here. Um, if you want to click through them, um, you know you can you can go to the next one. It'll show you uh, the link there, but you can go through all of these. But these are these are documented benefits of myo-inositol. So number one helps with weight loss, and it does that through hormone balancing. Uh, it may improve blood pressure, and and these next several are kind of all in line with metabolic syndrome, right? So normalizes cholesterol, improve, improves blood pressure, treats hypertension, reduces insulin resistance, improves gluco glucose homeostasis, increases uh, your protective cholesterol HDL, and reduces LDL. You can kind of think of these all as metabolic parameters, and myo-inositol is helping all of these things. Now, 
so so that's one sort of thing. So the hormones can kind of be lumped up here that it benefits. But then coming down here, it also helps in several other ways. So for instance, it helps reduce acne and hirsutism. So these are very important when we talk about PCOS. It also improves fertility. And then from a neurological standpoint, it can reduce depression, improve mood disorders, specifically anxiety or panic attacks, improve sleeping patterns, and then also help with the mood changes that are seen in PMS and PMDD. So now we have a whole range of, uh, of uh, benefits that myo and acetal um, uh, uh, does for you. And, and again, I want to kind of compartmentalize these into two categories. So we have like the, the metabolic parameters, which we discussed, but we also have the hormone, hormonal parameters. And myoinositol is working in both areas, which is huge because generally a supplement will work in one, but not the other, right? And that's good. We're okay. We're okay with that. If it does even one of those things, one of those big groups, but if it does both n now we're, um, now we're talking here. Now, and then another another huge benefit of this, and this is just separate from the documented benefits, is that it's a it's a myonositol is very benign, and it's a naturally occurring substance which has very few side effects. And some studies have shown that people take up to 18 grams of this stuff daily without any negative side effect. You know, except for being unable to take that much because their stomach's full, right? So it, it, it the point is, you can take a lot of it, and it's it's a very benign, very well tolerated. Um, and then uh, secondly, the, the, uh, why we want to discuss this one specifically is because myoinositol is considered a non-essential nutrient which means that your body can function without it, but it functions much better with it. So whenever we have something like that, it, it's really beneficial because let's let's compare that to say uh, vitamin B12 deficiency. Now you can take vitamin B12 if you're deficient and it will provide you with a lot of benefits, right? It'll improve your mood, your cognition, your energy production, etc. But if you're somebody who has sufficient um, B12 stores in your body and you take B12, it's probably not gonna do anything for you. This isn't the case with myoinositol. There's no, there's not necessarily a deficiency in your body. It's just anything in excess will will help you. So it's one of these supplements that can potentially benefit a lot of people. Um, with that in mind, let's let's talk about how it specifically helps weight loss, um, and we'll we'll talk about. Uh, the the first uh, there's three areas that I discussed there's more than that but we'll just talk about three main ones because I think they're the most important uh, number one is it treats uh, it, well it actually has been shown to lower leptin levels and that's huge why because there's very few hormones that actually and truly help lower leptin levels and in general there's very few treatments for for uh, reducing leptin levels as it, as it is there's a handful of medications and now there's a handful of supplements but really if you have leptin resistance documented leptin resistance this this should be really valuable to you because now you have another tool in your arsenal that you can use. Um, how exactly it's doing this is is not entirely, we're not entirely sure, um, but we know it's probably through that secondary, secondary messenger system that we talked about um, at the cellular level and probably its effects on insulin and leptin and number of various other factors. But the point is it has been shown um, even among obese people, not just patients with PCOS, to lower leptin, leptin levels. The second one is reduces insulin resistance. Again, another big one. Um, the real benefit here, and this is what I want to talk about just for a minute. So generally speaking, if we're going to talk about reducing insulin and improving um, or losing weight, we want my, my recommendations for you would be to do a combination of things. I would want you to change your diet, and I would also want you to take some supplements. Now, realistically, Patients and, and people in general, they're usually okay changing their diet, um, but not very many people stick to it long term like I like I really would want them to. When I when I when I ask them to change their diet, I'm really asking them to change their lifestyle. But because of the conventional wisdom, which is which has been ingrained in everyone's head to change your diet temporarily, lose some weight, then switch back to what you're eating, it's it's kind of hard to break that mold. Now here's where this can come into benefit because myoinositol can be taken and it blunts the the postprandial rise of insulin and sugar. Now let me explain that in layman terms. Postprandial just means after a meal, okay? So let's say that, and I'm not advocating this by any means, but just to illustrate the example, let's say you, you were eating healthy, like a paleo type of diet or something like that, and then you um, decide to have some ice cream or something, right? That that's going to cause your blood sugar to spike and it's also going to cause your insulin to spike. Well, myonositol can blunt the rise in blood glucose and blunt the rise in insulin after you have that meal. Now, again, it shouldn't be, it should just be used daily, but I'm, I'm using this to illustrate a point. But the value here is that the, the reason we develop insulin resistance, the reason we develop high blood sugar chronically is because of the uh, persistent and chronic rise of glucose 
uh, due to high sugar, high carbohydrate meals. So myo-inositol, in effect, is blunting that rise. Now, it's also working cellularly. You can see, uh, the, I'm not going to talk about the intracellular processes and biochemical pathways, but the point is it's also working um, intracellularly to help. So it kind of has a double whammy there, blunts the rise and then also treats and sensitizes the cells to insulin itself. Now, lastly, um, well, just for this category, lastly, myo also helps to balance sex hormones. By sex hormones, I'm referring to um, testosterone, estrogen, and progesterone. Now, this, this the studies are predominantly done in females, but they're also relevant to to males. So don't don't confuse that. But studies have shown that myoinositol helps decrease estrogen levels and improve estrogen dominant syndromes. It reduces luteinizing hormone production, okay, and therefore reduces testosterone because um, LH is stimulatory uh, to testosterone, and that's very helpful in women with PCOS. It also increases sex hormone binding protein synthesis. What that means is that the the, the there is a protein in your in your blood that binds to these sex hormones. So if you have more of this binding protein, you can you have less free hormones available. Now, if you can draw a parallel real quick to uh, other videos that I've I've done on PCOS, you know that sometimes it's not a it's not it's not true that a woman with PCOS has high total testosterone. Most of the time, she has high free testosterone, right? High free levels of androgens and testosterone. So if you can bind up and gobble up that free testosterone, you can reduce the impact that androgens have on your cells. And that's really valuable. Then the last one is it increases the ovulation and therefore normalizes menstrual cycle. By the way, this is also how it can improve fertility. Um, and we'll talk about that. Uh, well, yeah, we'll talk about that in a minute. So anyway, Balances your sex hormones. Again, you can go to the relevant studies here if you'd like um, to, to confirm or, you know, just, just listen to what I'm saying here. So last, uh, lastly, I also want to talk about how my, myonositol helps specifically in PCOS and infertility. Now, remember back to the beginning when I talked about hormone imbalances and I talked about metabolic dysfunction in patients. Um, and I said that uh, myonositol helps both of these which is huge. Now, I want you to think about PCOS as really a combination of these two things. PCOS, you have hormone imbalances, right? You have high estrogen, you have high testosterone, you have low progesterone, your infertility and insulin resistance, right? All those. But you also have metabolic dysfunction. So in addition to those hormone imbalances, you also are landed with high cholesterol, weight gain, high blood pressure, abdominal obesity, and impaired glucose metabolism. So you really have a double whammy of two things. Now, the beauty of myoinositol is that it treats both of these things, okay? And, and studies have shown that as it relates to fertility and reducing these things, that myoinositol is at least as effective at met, as metformin as at increasing fertility in women with PCOS, which is huge, okay? Because it has virtually zero negative, negative side effects. So the, the other option, and here's why this is also important, most of the time, conventional wisdom in a menstruating woman with PCOS to say, well, we don't really know how to, if, if you fail metformin therapy, we, we, our second option would be to just blunt and block all of your, your symptoms by taking oral contraceptives, right? Just take birth control pills it, that'll blunt your system. It'll kind of override all this stuff and then, you know, you'll be better. Well, that's not really a great way of looking at it, especially if you're trying to get pregnant. So then your option is to go on metformin while you try to conceive. But now you have a secondary option that can be used in conjunction with metformin if necessary to, and is, by the way, is, is benign and, and safe to use while trying to conceive. And that is myonositol. So a lot of, a lot of benefit here as it relates to PCOS specifically. So how to use it? Um, I'm, I'm not going to go over this stuff because you guys can read it. Um, I will say the patients who I think will do the best with it, and then we'll talk about how to uh, the recommended brand that I use. I do recommend while we get in here just that you use a powder, um, and I recommend you use relatively higher dosages. So um, I'm, I like to see around four to five grams per day um, when I re when I recommend this. So quite a bit actually. Um, and you, you'll talk here. It's about it's about a teaspoon based off of the supplement that I'm recommending here. But first, let's talk about who should use it. So any patient interested in weight loss or anyone who's suffering from weight loss resistance, patients with PCOS or high androgens in general, or if you fall on that PCOS spectrum, right? So because some women with PCOS have it much worse than others and, and vice versa. So you want to consider that spectrum. And if you're on that spectrum, you may benefit from it. Patients who are suffering from infertility due to PCOS or endometriosis, we talked about that. Anyone with insulin resistance, um, high fasting blood sugar, blood sugar issues, type 2 diabetes, 
you know, any of those things, right? Or, or let's say a woman who um, has high blood sugar just during pregnancy. Anything to imply that your blood sugar is being dysregulated. Um, patients with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, why? That's predominantly felt to be related to insulin resistance. And then, of course, patients who have known, documented, or suspected leptin resistance. And you can, you can diagnose that um, by, you can look at the articles that I have. I have a lot of information about leptin on my site. Or you can order a fasting uh, serum leptin level, as I've shown here. And if it's greater than 10, you have leptin resistance. Okay. I use 12 here, but I, 10 to 12, just if you're overweight and your leptin and your fasting leptin is greater than 10 to 12, you have leptin resistance. So again, um, how do you actually use it? You want to use at least 4,000 milligrams per day. Um, you know, you can split that up in the morning and night at about 2,000 or so. One teaspoon of the supplement I recommend is 24 or 2,400 milligrams. So you can use te two teaspoons per day and that'll get you to 4,800, which is a little more than, than four grams, but, um, uh, four grams or 4,000 milligrams, but it's a, uh, it's a little bit easier to use because it's just two teaspoons. Um, you want to continue treatment for at least three to six months. And then I do recommend that you combine it with other supplements. And again, there's not many supplements, um, that talk about how to specifically, uh, treat leptin. So I have included, uh, links in here. If you want to go through these, you can find out, um, the various supplements that help treat leptin resistance. Um, and then lastly, it's worth pointing out, um, just real quick here is that you can get inositol inside of an injection and it's it, the, I don't know if you realize this, but the B12 MIC injection, the I in the MIC is actually inositol. So this, this presents an interesting opportunity and a way for you to get, um, higher bioavailability of inositol by taking it through, um, an injectable form. So this is also probably one of the reasons why some people swear mcb 12 shots help with weight loss and other people don't, or other people do not. But I, I do think that they have a lot of value. And, and again, I provided links here that you can, that you can go to, to, um, determine, um, if a B12, if B12 or MIC injections will be helpful for you. Now, spoiler alert, they, they probably will be. You just have to learn how to use them the right way. Um, so that's pretty much it. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this on myoinositol, um, and why I think it's really valuable and helpful. Um, and I would, if you have any questions, let me know. Just leave them in the comments below. And again, um, I would ask if you enjoy this, please uh, leave a review on iTunes or subscribe on YouTube. Let me know what I'm doing well and what, what I could do better at. Um, I'd appreciate it. Thanks. And I'll talk to you guys soon.